So we have our intergenerational justice initiative who are going to lead us this morning. And um, if, as they're leading us, you may think to yourself, I don't see much inter in the intergenerational uh, team here because all of them, with the exception of Claire Peterson, all of them are in high school. Uh, Claire Peterson is now in college. Give it up for Claire Peterson. Hey, there we go. Uh, but part of the reason that uh, the other, some of the other generations are not here uh, is that they've come into some health challenges. And so uh, Joan Spute is at home sick now. Uh, Jean Chingorman is also not well, so I'm going to pray for Joan and Jean before we uh, invite our team to lead us in the way they see fit. Um, and so I invite you to join me in prayer, if you would. God, we do pray for Joan. We pray for Jean. We thank you for the ways that uh, they have experienced some healing from uh, where they were with their specific situations. And we ask that you would continue to heal them through uh, medicine, through the support of church, through, through your spirit, whatever that looks like. We ask that you would heal them um, in ways that bear witness to you, bring them back to being the most Joan and Jean that they can be. Um, and we pray this in your name this morning. Amen. So uh, again, just if, if you are new and you're not familiar with the Intergenerational Justice Initiative, it is uh, an invitation. So every quarter, our team comes and leads us in biblical ways that God invites us to embody and practice justice. Uh, just, it's one of our core practices as a church. Uh, it is a biblical mandate to practice love in not just one-on-one -on -one interactions, but broader systems. Uh, and I think love is, is what justice is, just in broader terms. Amen. So they're going to lead us this morning. I'm excited for the ways that they're going to lead us, and I'm going to stop talking, and I'm going to give them the microphone. Here we go. So we're going to start by introducing ourselves. My name is Aaron Bonning. I'm 17, and I'm going to be a senior at Carmel High School. Yeah, you are. <laughs> I'm Grace. I'm also 17, and I'm going to be a senior at PG. Um, I'm the co-coordinator, the other co-coordinator. My mother was wishes she could be here, but she did just have an appendectomy, so... My name is Claire. I am 15, and I'm going to be a junior at Carmel High. <laughs> uh, my name's also Claire. I'm 17, and I just graduated from Carmel High. <laughs> okay, so um, today we're going to be talking about gun violence. So to start, I just have a few like general statistics on it. So um, up to 71% of all homicides globally involve what? Oh, <laughs> involve gun violence. Um, more than one billion firearms are in circulation globally, and 85% are in the hands of private individuals. Um, 250,000 deaths due to gun violence um, occurred in June of 2019 alone, um, and 30 people are murdered by gunshot every day in South Africa. Um, and then in the U.S. in 2021, um, almost 49,000 Americans died by firearms, um, which is an average of one death every 11 minutes. Firearms are the leading cause of death for children and teens ages 1 to 19 in the United States. Uh, 4.6 million children live with unlocked loaded guns in their homes, um, which is one out of three homes with kids in the U.S. have guns. Uh, in 2022, there were 45,222 gun deaths in the United States. And then in an average year, 3,089 people die by guns in California. Firearms are the third leading cause of death among children and teens in California. And then from 2010 to 2020, Monterey County was ranked fourth in gun homicides per capita in California. Sorry, technical difficulties. Um, so why is gun violence an injustice issue? So 45% of black and Hispanic Latino Americans believe gun violence is an important issue impacting their neighborhood, um, as opposed to only 27% of white Americans. Black youth are 11 times more likely to die from fire, firearm homicide 
and Latino Hispanic youth are 2.5 times more likely to die from firearm homicide than their white peers. Um, businesses are less likely to settle in areas where there is high gun violence. Uh, so communities with like lots of gun violence and have less opportunities and are less developed than areas with less gun violence. So in the broader issue of gun violence, schools is a big focus. And since 1999, more than 338,000 students in the US have experienced gun violence at school. So this affects a lot of families in our country. And each day, 12 children die from gun violence in America. Another 32 are shot and injured. Also, it is really important that a lot of these are planned in advance, which gives us hope that we can prevent school shootings because 93% of school shooters plan the attack in advance. Um, the Sandy Hook Promise is a website that is a national nonprofit and it accepts tax-deductible tax donations. It was founded and led by several family members whose loved ones were killed at Sandy Hook Elementary School on December 14, 2012. And this is a really great website that you guys can donate to if you want to help the cause. So a really important part about this issue is because we're a church who worships God, we have to learn, you know, what does God think of this issue? And the best way to find out is just looking through the Bible, through God's word, to know what he thinks about it. But I looked through the whole Bible and I didn't find anything about guns. So probably because they weren't invented yet, but we can still learn um, what God thinks about it because of other, other things he says, like, you know, murder, stuff like that. So obviously I think everyone knows God commands us not to murder. That's the sixth commandment. It says, you shall not murder. And that's in Exodus 20, 13. And this is because God highly values human life. God created humans, he loves us, he created us in our own image. It says that right here, whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed, for God made man in his own image. And that's in Genesis 9, 6, when God created the world. And then, also with gun violence, sometimes, it, or a lot of times, it comes in with like anger, hatred, um, things like that, because um, yeah, people will have anger and hatred when they're using guns in violent ways. And these are just some verses about that. So it says, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. That's James 1.20. And then it says, whoever hates his brother is in darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. That's from 1 John 2.11. And it says, the Lord examines the righteous, but the wicked, those who love violence, he hates with a passion. Psalm 11, verse 5. I think this really says, like, clearly, like, what God thinks about, you know, hatred, anger, violence. It just, he despises it. God hates it. And then, also, God commands us to protect innocent and voiceless. A lot of times, um, people who are victims of gun violence, they're innocent and they're, they're voiceless, they can't protect themselves. And right here it says, do what is just and right. Rescue from the hand of the oppressor, the one who has been robbed. Do no wrong or violence to the foreigner, the, far the fatherless or the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place. That's from Jeremiah 22, verse three. And also, um, as Claire said, a lot of times children are a victim of gun violence, especially in schools. And God loves children. We all know that God loves children, and he takes care of them. As Jesus said to his disciples, uh, let the children come to me, do not hinder for them, for such belongs the kingdom of God. And he took them in his arms and blessed them. That's from Mark 10, 14. And I just want to say again, like, how much God really cares about children and how important that is to him. So this is obviously a very heavy issue, um, but there are some like progress being made in the United States. The Bipartisan Safe Communities Act was the first gun safety law in like many decades. It passed June 15th, 2022. 
It implemented several changes to the mental health system, school safety programs, and gun control laws. For example, um, having mandated background checks for firearm purchases under 21. And some drastic measures were attempted to be put in place, such as a bill that was proposed um, allowing teachers to possess firearms in the classroom. But that bill was not passed. It just shows um, how prevalent this issue is throughout the country, and especially throughout schools. Um, and then the graph down there, the Bipartisan Safe Communities Act, or BSCA, the total denials and the denials because of that act um, to purchase a gun have gone up throughout the months it was enacted. So it just shows how, um, how it has worked. And then these are some graphs. Um, the deaths by, by gun, <laughs> deaths by guns have peaked in 2021, but because of the like things enacted and the measures that have been taken, they have steadily steadily declined. So, like gun sales and gun deaths have declined since 2020 and 2021. So I want to share with you guys this really sad, this really surprising statistic. It says in 2021, and this is only in America, so just in our country, not in the whole world, just in America, our country, in 2021, someone died by gunfire every 11 minutes. On average, every 11 minutes, one person died of, by a gunshot. And over here, I don't know if you guys noticed, we have five people standing here, all with signs. Hold up your signs so we can all see. Every, so every 11 minutes, we had a person come from the congregation and stand up here just to represent, just during this service, how many people died of gun violence. So yeah, we thought that'd be a powerful way to show you guys. And we're gonna wrap up with the benediction now. All right. Oh, we do a song? Okay, now we're gonna do, yeah, we're gonna do a song. Thank you guys. Thank you, Aaron. Sure, thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, uh, Claire and Claire and Grace. Um, <clears throat> nice biblical scholarship. There is no passage that talks about guns that I know of. But um, there, there are passages that, that mention spears and swords and, uh, and in Isaiah and Joel, there's a celebration that um, those instruments of, of death, those instruments of war and violence, uh, when they are caught up in the sweeping movement of God's restoration and God's renewal of a broken world filled with anger and hate and violence, uh, when those instruments of, of war and violence and death are swept up in the movement of God's restoration, uh, swords are turned into, anyone? Plowshares and, and spears are pruning hooks. And so instruments of death are, are swept up and renewed into gardening tools. Isn't that cool? Yes. That they're, they're changed and they're, re, they're reformed and renewed and they are, dare I say, saved. <laughs> and, and instead of reaping uh, and, and spreading death, they, they bring life and they bring flourishing. And there's this return back to... Uh, the created world that God had before the fall, before brokenness crept in. One of my favorite ministries uh, in the world is this, I, I think it's called Raw Tools, R-A-W Tools, I think. And, and you know what their ministry is? They take, they take um, firearms and they take bullet casings that have been uh, donated to them and they, they melt them down and they wield them down. And you know what they make out of them? Plowshares. They make gardening tools out of them. So you can get a spade that at one point was, you know, parts of a gun. Uh, and you can get a shovel that at one point, I don't know, was other, a bigger gun. <laughs> uh, but, I, but what a brilliant vision of, of God's kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven, right? And that was Jesus' prayer, that, that God's will will be done here on earth as it is in heaven, that his kingdom would come, his will will be done. Uh, and so may we be a church that recognizes 
um, that the way of violence, the way of, of brokenness is, is a, a symptom of a deeper issue in this world that is sin and brokenness in our own hearts. Again, anger leads toward all this stuff. And may we uh, do what we can to recognize the move, movement of God's restoration in this world uh, and just align ourselves with it uh, and, and garden. Amen? Amen. Let's stand and we'll sing together.
Uh, would you grab a seat? We have a. We get to do something fun right before our benediction. Oh, cool. Is Claire Peterson still here? Claire Peterson? Did she? Hey, there she is. Claire Peterson, come on up. Come on up. Hmm? Please. So, uh, so our intergenerational justice initiative was started by Claire Peterson, yeah. along, with, oh, along with Grace Gorman. And there is a card floating around somewhere. These are not for, why'd you, they're not for me, they're for you. Uh, there's a card somewhere around here with Claire's name on it. We'll get it to you soon. Um, and also here's some words of encouragement from the leadership team and the staff and some others who just, you know. Um, but if you're not aware, Claire helped start the Intergenerational Justice Initiative as uh, an opportunity to, oh, here we are, there we go. There's a card too, you know. Um, and, and, you know, we, we bless our kids each week uh, with the children's blessing that we read. And this is a, a, a really off, you know, awesome opportunity uh, and a, a brilliant ministry that you helped start uh, where you have blessed us, where you've sort of brought issues of, that you guys identify in this world, uh, bring them into dialogue with Scripture, and lead us, you teach us as a congregation, and we are very grateful for that. So thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your willingness to jump in and uh, show up and lead us in the ways of Jesus. Cool? Can we, can we pray for you? Is that okay if we pray for you as a church? Okay, good. We'll pray for you. Oh, and also this is Claire's, the reason Claire's, uh, we're honoring Claire is that this is her last intergenerational justice initiative Sunday before she goes off to the lovely San Diego. Yeah, San Diego State. There you go. San Diego State University, you know. Yeah. So we want to, this is a prayer of gratitude and a prayer of, of sending as um, you go off to college and stuff. So, all right, let's pray. God, we do thank you for Claire. We thank you for the ways that she uh, passionately engages with your word and leads us in ways that um, draw us closer into your heart your character, your spirit, your kingdom, you know, on earth as it is in heaven. So we thank you for the ways that she has helped um, found this ministry, that she has led us as a church. And we pray blessing upon her as she goes off to San Diego State University as a freshman, and she uh, learns and develops and grows in her faith journey. Be with her uh, in ways that we will not be able to as she goes off into a new place um, but we pray that there would be community there to support her in her journey and that she would continue to grow uh, further up and further into your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. We pray a blessing upon Claire, and we are grateful for her in your name. Amen. All right. Thanks, Claire. Yeah, thank you. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. All right. Um, and then I think the IJI team has a word of uh sending a benediction for us. So our benediction is from Micah 6, 8. Wait, I lost it. One second. No, O oh people, the Lord has told you what is good. And this is what he requires of you. To do what is right, to love mercy, uh, and to all humbly with your God. Amen. So, yeah, no, one of my favorite moments as a church was when um, in a sermon I said, it's kind of hard to understand God's will sometimes, right? God's will for our lives. And then uh, our good friend Curtis Holton either texted me in the middle of the sermon or may, I can't, he may have just yelled out loud. I forget how it went down. But he said, no, it's quite easy, in fact. Just read Micah 6 8. He, 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 that's, that's God's will for us. Amen. Amen. So, go in peace. Go in the name of the God who loves mercy and does justice and invites us to do the same. Uh, and if you want to help us clean up, that'd be rad. And let's all go hang out and have a big old picnic barbecue via Paraiso Park. Amen. Thank you, IJ.
Curtis and Wendy are like pretty much the only two that are always like streaming. Yeah, yeah. And this was like so much a Curtis Sunday. Yeah. No, like anti gun violence. Yeah, yeah. And you know. What's up, bud? That's how you come up with the shows with us, you know? Cool. Okay. okay. It's a nice little guitar. <laughs> 